Uh, today I'll be talking about practical zero-knowledge systems for online trust. And it seems like there's some excitement about uh, zero-knowledge machine learning, which uh, some people asked about. It seems I've been conscripted to lead a working group on this, so please find me uh, at lunch or drinks the other slots to, uh, um, to talk more about zero-knowledge machine learning. So to set the stage for this talk, uh, more of the world is moving online. And this includes things like cloud providers, um, social media, uh, news sources, and a whole host of other things. And one really emerging and important question is how can we trust in an online world? So for example, this image I'm showing here was generated by an, art, uh, by an AI method uh, called ControlNet, which was, which was literally released a few days ago. And this can basically take any image you want and edit it to the precise uh, output that you want to uh, edit the image to. Um, and beyond that, uh, uh, nation states have hacked cloud providers to, um, to basically mess with um, the results that they're serving to their customers. And so in this talk, I'll describe uh, how to uh, have online trust in the face of uh, deep fakes and also cloud provider uh, hacks. And I'll first by st uh, start with uh, trusting visual media. Uh, what we'll focus on in this talk are what are called deep fakes. And a deep fake takes an image and then edits it uh, to uh, modify uh, the image to uh, typically for some malicious purpose. So for example, when FTX collapsed, um, there was a recent online scam uh, that released um, this uh, video of uh, 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 SPF, uh, but modified saying that you should go to ftxcompensation.com to uh, receive uh, compensation for the collapse of FTX, but in reality, they just stole all your funds. Uh, but beyond that, they're also used by state actors to spread misinformation. So for example, Russia has used this in the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict, and also to trick businesses into miswiring funds. And these are all real applications of deepfakes today. <clears throat> so one uh, method that we can use to help against deepfakes is what are called attested cameras. And attested cameras contain hardware, uh, uh, hardware elements which uh, can sign uh, uh, photos, and so you can basically attest that it took this photo, but not necessarily this photo. Now this is really great um, if we can have these devices uh, widely spread. But there is one problem, which is that in many circumstances, photo editors want to edit their images privately. So for example, let's say I have this uh, image here, and there's a sensitive credit card uh, in the pig's mouth. Uh, we might want to remove this piece of information before releasing the, uh, the image. And if you look at, for example, social media, something like 80% uh, of social media images are edited before they're, they're posted. So we can't uh, just simply release the original images. Uh, so everyone here um, is familiar with these three techniques, uh, multiply computation, homomorphic encryption, and uh, zero-knowledge proofs. So I'll just quickly uh, say that you know, they're really great for, uh, uh, in, for preserving privacy and validity, um, and they also don't have any uh, interaction required, which is really important for the social media setting. But unfortunately, they have really high compute overheads. And so in this talk, I'll briefly describe uh, some of the techniques we implemented to have efficient image edits. Um, I'll also really quickly skip over the API behind zero knowledge proofs, which I believe everyone here is familiar with. But again, this, these proofs can be computed on demand and after the fact. So even after you've released an image, if someone uh, wants to uh, verify the validity, they can ask the image taker for the proof after the fact, which is really important for the social media uh, settings. We developed a framework, ZK Image, to attest to image edits securely and privately. And the way this works is that given a hidden input image, uh, we can uh, pass it through a library uh, and re uh, reveal uh, the edited image. Now I want to put ZK image in context because this, is, this isn't the only thing that's needed for uh, trust uh, against deepfakes. What we need to do is we need to also have a registry uh, which basically has uh, the image, uh, well, hashes of the original image or commitments to the original image along with the signatures from the attested cameras. We, can also, we also uh, have the uh, image taker and image editor upload proofs to the registry. And then when a, uh, a consumer of the image wants to uh, verify the, uh, that an edited image in fact came from the original image, they can look up the registry uh, and verify that the original image uh, commitment and the signature uh, matches along with the proof uh, of, the, uh, of the image edits. Now, one major uh, issue in 
attesting to private uh, image edits is to be able to attest to uh, multiple edits. And the way we do this in zero knowledge proofs is to basically take the, the original hidden image and reveal the commitment to the uh, hit original image and then uh, also reveal commitments to the intermediate images while keeping the, the intermediates private. We can then take the intermediates and then pass them to a second proof uh, and apply some more edits before releasing the final image. Now in practice, what I'm showing here are actually relatively lightweight uh, edits, so they might not, you might not necessarily need uh, this heavyweight uh, uh, mechanism, but if you want to do other kinds of edits, for example, edits involving uh, neural networks or edits involving, say, blur, sharpening, or other kinds of edits, uh, you, you actually do need to split the computation. Now, just to give a little bit of uh, uh, background on the evaluation setup, we uh, used uh, ZK image on HD images, and to the best of our knowledge, it's the first time that we can, prov we can prove image edits uh, privately and securely with HD images. And we used the R6i 16x large instance type which is fairly heavyweight, um, but as I'll show, uh, the, memory, um, the memory overheads uh, can be brought down to be uh, proven on actual consumer devices, so for example, a Mac, Mac Pro. Uh, we measured the metrics of key generation and proving and verification times. So as you can see here, uh, the, uh, for lightweight image edits, for example, cropping and resizing, the proving time is around uh, five minutes, uh, but the verification times here are as lo little as six uh, milliseconds. And furthermore, these proof sizes are relatively lightweight, around three kilobytes. Uh, one of the things that we actually found quite cool, but a well-known result in zero-knowledge proofs, is that for the convolution, the verification time is actually cheaper than running the convolution itself. Uh, so uh, uh, for the social media consumers, it can actually be cheaper to verify the image edit than it would be to replay the image edit, even if you gave them a, tr a, uh, a non-private transcript of the original image and the edit itself. So I know there's been a lot of excitement about uh, zero knowledge machine learning, so I'll actually switch over to that now. And I'll first talk about this in the context of uh, trusting cloud providers, but I'll also briefly mention some other uh, potential applications of ZKML. And if you would like to find me to discuss this more for the working group, uh, I'll be uh, around all day. So, uh, there's been a huge rise of ML service providers. So for example, OpenAI now only provides certain of, uh, many of their models behind uh, gated APIs. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other uh, circumstances under which this arises. For example, medical image classification. Now, if a model consumer, for example, a hospital, sends an image to a provider, uh, they can, they can you know, ideally will run the correct model and then return the image. But there is this core challenge, which is how can we verify that the actual machine learning model that they, the cloud provider said they ran actually ran? And you might wonder why you might care about this. Well, in certain circumstances, for example, if you have really uh, highly regulated industries, um, the hospital needs to be, uh, have liability against, uh, for example, potential hacks. And furthermore, if you want to decentralize, say, machine learning inference serving, you, you want to be able to trust your counterparty. Um, so I showed this slide before. Um, so there's a variety of techniques, for example, multi-party computation and homomorphic encryption. One thing I briefly want to mention is that um, if you want to do multi-party computation under the uh, assumption of adversarial uh, uh, model providers, uh, all the numbers that you see in the literature today basically go up by somewhere between one to three orders of magnitude, depending on the techniques that you use. Uh, so it's really impractical for the kinds of uh, computation that we want to run. And in this talk, I'll describe how to go from small models to big models to, uh, for embedding the um, uh, ML models and zero knowledge proofs. So I'll skip over this again. This, and again, these, can, these proofs can be computed on demand and after the fact. So in the context of model, model, uh, serve, a model provider, you can first serve the inference, and then if the consumer wants to uh, have a proof after the fact, then this can be done without uh, delaying the original uh, latency. So just very briefly, um, the model provider can provide a proof pi uh, that the actual correct model uh, ran. Now there has been some prior work on zero knowledge proofs for deep learning inference, and to the best of our knowledge, uh, all this prior works, works on uh, MNIST or C410, which are unrealistically small. Uh, uh, no one uses these models in production. In this talk, I'll describe how to uh, scale up to ImageNet, 
um, which is uh, on, on real models that are being used uh, today. So when designing uh, zero-knowledge machine learning uh, proving techniques, there's a whole host of things that we need to consider, including the model architecture on the ML side, the arithmetization uh, on the uh, proving, uh, on the uh, co basically the compilation side, and also the proving system itself. For example, there are certain proving systems which are more amenable to, um, uh, to machine learning uh, computations. So in our framework, uh, ZKML, we optimized uh, uh, deep neural networks for um, uh, zero knowledge proofs. So to do this, we use quantized models, um, use highly optimized layouts in our frameworks. Um, and as I'll describe, we can, we're somewhere between uh, like 100 to 100,000 times faster than some of the prior work in this space. Uh, and can also achieve a high accuracy. In terms of our arithmetization, we uh, use um, custom gates for the linear layers. Uh, non, uh, lookups for the non-linearities non and a basic operator fusion uh, for improved performance. Just to briefly touch on some applications of ZKML, uh, if, if you have public data and a private model, you might want to verify proprietary model's accuracy. And if you have a public model and private data, you can do a trustless retrieval of hidden data, for example, in a legal subpoena. And beyond um, cloud providers, there's uh, a whole host of other kinds of applications you could imagine. For example, authenticating smart contracts with Face ID. Um, this is uh, actually uh, possible today, uh, and as I'll describe in some of our benchmarks. Uh, you can also imagine privacy preserving biometric login, um, prompt marketplaces for generative AI, and a whole host of other applications. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the evaluation, uh, what I'll, um, uh, we use MobileNet version 2 uh, with a uh, fairly hefty AWS instance type. Uh, this can be, for example, accelerated with some of the uh, techniques that are described in some of the previous talks uh, today. And the metrics that we measure here are accuracy, uh, key generation time, and proving and verification times. So for the results in our paper, we can achieve an accuracy of 80% on ImageNet uh, with a proving time of around 2,500 seconds and a verification time of about 10 seconds. Uh, in our open source uh, code release in the next one or two weeks, um, we can achieve 10% uh, higher accuracy, so around 90% accuracy, uh, six times uh, cheaper proving, so uh, those costs go down by quite a bit, but also 500 times cheaper verification, which can also be done on chain. Now just to put this in context, if you want to uh, compute the cost of verifying a private model's accuracy, uh, this might cost around uh, $2,500 if you want to compute the accuracy within 1%. And to put this in context, it might cost around $85,000 to compute uh, the, to compute, to get the training data for a moderate size data set. So this is really becoming uh, practical for certain kinds of applications. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, we're increasingly interacting with digital systems and zero knowledge uh, proofs provide uh, trust in the face of adversaries. And this includes against deep, uh, deep fakes and also against ML as a service attacks. Uh, we have an open source uh, release coming soon, and as I mentioned, uh, we're somewhere between 100 to 10,000 times faster than some of the prior work in this space. Uh, my email is here, and my Twitter handle is here as well, but I'm also happy to take questions now, and I'll also be around for the working group sessions. Thanks. Um, can you further utilize the Google Verifier trade-off um, in Halo 2? Yeah, so there are ways that we can uh, trade off between proving and verification times. Um, that's uh, things that we're planning on, on working on uh, in the future. Um, but for the time being, um, we imagine things like, for example, uh, uh, privacy preserving delegated proving to uh, reduce the cost of, say, if you want to do uh, prove this on mobile phones. So that's not um, something that we're focusing on at the moment. And also, if you can also imagine using hardware accelerators to really bring down the costs. So for example, um, these proving times, in addition to being around six times cheaper than what I mentioned, if you use accelerators, can go down by another 10 or 20 times. Uh, so, but it just hasn't been integrated into our uh, framework yet. Hi. Uh, so my question is that there's some new work in the past year that works on uh, fixing proofs for floating point arithmetic, and so ZK proofs for that. And so my question is, how much effort and time does it take to do arithmetization in your proof systems? 
and what do you think those proof systems that allow for boarding point arithmetic can help you improve? Yeah, so um, from a user perspective, if you want to use our library, there's no effort. You just run our library and it will just do everything for you. Uh, in terms of using the floating point computations, the overheads for floating point computation versus um, our fixed point is something like 30, between 25 to 50 times overhead. So basically you take all our numbers and multiply them by 50 and that's what you get if you use the floating point uh, 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 proving systems. Now I do think that there's gonna be a lot of exciting work to bring down those costs, but uh, today they're not really practical for these large scale uh, machine learning models. Uh, just to put this in perspective, um, this model, uh, I don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head, but it takes around 100 million floating point computations. And if you wanted to do that using the, uh, some of this work, it, it would just be too slow. And they are using mostly GKR protocol. How do you compare with that work? Uh, I'm not sure if, that, if their work has been made public yet. Um, but for example, um, compared to uh, some of the other work in the GKR space, we're, we're much, much more efficient. And actually, that's because um, for many kinds of computations, you need to basically do nonlinearities. Uh, and they're not very efficient uh, in the, uh, in, in the uh, GKR style uh, protocols. So there's basically this trade off between. Um, uh, how efficient your matrix multiplies are versus how efficient your, uh, your nonlinearities are. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of exciting work in basically combining these two kinds of proof systems in the future. So there's going to be a lot of, uh, um, basically these costs are going to go way down. But at least as of today, uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, we are substantially more efficient than, uh, than that work as well.